Hello and welcome to the Patient Educators Update. My name is Chuck Jones. I'm with Synergy Broadcast. And as always, we're joined by our special guest, Fran London. Hi, Fran. Hi, Chuck. For those of you who may not know, Fran is the Patient Education Specialist at Phoenix Children's Hospital in Phoenix, Arizona. And she's a real-life patient educator, and she's also the author of the book, No Time to Teach, The Essence of Healthcare education for patients and their families. I think I got that right. I probably I probably botched a little bit, but it's a great book. I'll hold up a copy of it right here. This is what we use kind of as our uh, source for a lot of the materials that we talk about on the Patient Educators Update. And the purpose of this show is to talk about patient education in a clinical environment from the patient educator's perspective, uh, rather than uh, from the patient. Uh, and we talk about how to do lots of things and today we are going to talk about something that um, was relatively new to me and that's called the change of shift report or the bedside shift report and Fran I, I told you briefly before we started recording that um, I got an email from a nurse asking about information on this and I didn't have any so I started doing a little research to find out what it was and found some uh, lots of research and I found some videos of hospitals that do bedside shift reporting or change shift reporting and um, I was struck by one of the things that was missing from this and we'll talk about that in just a minute but why don't you address exactly what is a change of shift report or a bedside shift report okay well there's always been um, a change of shift report which is when a nurse goes off shift she talks to the nurse who's coming on shift and explaining what the status of the patient is, what the care plan is, and where you're going. Right. Um, now, with patient-centered care coming in uh, more frequently, we're starting to do that discussion in front of the patient. So it's a bedside shift report where we're having the conversation of what's going on, where we're at, what the plan is with the patient, um, so we're incorporating the patient into the process. Yeah, and the videos that I saw uh, not only included the patient, but if the patient had family there, they were included as well uh, in the discussion and given an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and uh, there were quite a few hospitals that have put these uh, up, and I don't know if they did it just to share the information or uh, to document what they were doing or not, but I applaud them for doing that because I found it very helpful. Now. Um, the obvious question would be, do we know how many hospitals are doing this? And I don't. Yeah. I, some do and some don't. Yeah, I, I don't either. Uh, I, I would I, think the trend is towards doing it more. Yeah, and, and I tried to see if there was any data out there, and I, I didn't find any yet, but I'll keep digging. Uh, someone may have done a survey on this, and uh, s sometimes with, uh, with Google searches, you know, you've got to get really specific to get what you want. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll continue to look. But I must tell you that my experience with uh, bedside shift change reporting uh, has been very consistent. My wife and I talked about it over the weekend. Over the last, uh, um, I don't know, four to six years, uh, four hospitals in two different states, bedside shift reporting was, hi, my name is, and I'll be your nurse for the next 12 hours and then they would erase the nurse's name on the whiteboard and write their name up there and that was the that's the sum total of it so seeing the videos of what they were doing was uh, was quite impressive so um, I guess the, the, the thing that I was most struck by of the half a dozen videos that I watched is the key thing that to me was missing from their demonstration was a total lack of information on the patient education process. What did the patient know, where were they at, and what were they in, in the process of trying to uh, teach them or, or help them learn. Uh, and this strikes me as being just a the potential to have a huge gap in patient care if it's not discussed. So why not, can you address that a little bit? Um, well, yeah, there's basically, historically, again, even when the change of shift report was done away from the bedside, patient education was not usually addressed because it was usually focused on the medical condition of the patient. Mm -hmm. 
However, now that we're incorporating the patient, it makes perfect sense to um, find out where the patient is along the process. What does he understand about the reason he's in the hospital? What uh, he expects to happen before he goes home? What condition he expects to go home in? And um, how he's going to take care of himself. Mm -hmm. So now it makes a lot more sense to start talking about patient education at every shift change and what the status is and, and where you're going. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, I'll relay just a personal story uh, that we had with my mother whenever we had shift change. Um, when the nurse would come back in after she had gone through all of her changes and she would come back in to start her care for the night, it was clear to me that she didn't really know much about my mother. She didn't know she was deaf. She didn't know she had Alzheimer's. And you could tell just based on the way she talked to her that she didn't know these things, which had they done the bed shift change like you talk about in my presence, I would have been able to discuss that. And where I found myself every time was almost having to retrain the nurse on stuff that I had already talked about earlier to get the other nurse ready to deal with her because my mother was not an easy patient being hard of hearing and Alzheimer's. So uh, I was there to try to make things better, but the information was not being conveyed during the uh, change of shift uh, and had that happened in front of us a little bit more extensively I think we would have had much better outcomes. Yeah I think it's a good way to proceed. Yeah uh, now l let's talk about uh, how it should be done how education or the discussion of patient education should be uh, discussed during these changes because there's a couple of things that are going on one with a patient that's, that's newly admitted um, if there's a shift change shortly after that, like I can remember being, you know, admitted, you know, close to seven o'clock at night just before the shift change, and so the first nurse didn't know much. Second nurse is coming in, and there's still a lot not known. How sh how should they address the patient education part during that type of uh, shift change? Well, I can tell you what we do at the hospital where I work, which is Phoenix Children's Hospital. Um, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, we have something called a journey board, which is basically a visual uh, listing all the things the patient and family needs to know before going home to be safe, to be safely discharged. So um, we would refer to the, the journey board, and the first item there is, can you tell us why you're in the hospital? Mm -hmm. um, so certainly even at that early stage, you know you had pains or there, there was some issue that brought you into the hospital and got you admitted. So you can at least start talking about that and some of the questions may be how serious is this, uh, what kind of tests do we need to know to find out what it is. So it, it progresses as the admission progresses and has you, as you know more information. Yeah, and, and of course if they're doing the proper assessment along the way as you, uh, as the patient progresses in terms of their understanding of what they have to do uh, in order to be ready for discharge and how to take care of themselves at home, this can save an awful lot of time. Um, Absolutely. I mean, you know, because they're not, you know, a new nurse. You know, I, I, I've seen, I've experienced this several times where, um, you know, a nurse that had been taking care of my wife or mother or me for two days, now it's going to be off for a week. And so you're getting a whole new crew. And uh, if they're not brought up to speed in your presence, then they don't necessarily know everything that you know. So if they have to start all over again, we're, we're wasting time that could have been spent in just a short period of time during the change of shift report, right? Exactly. Exactly. And in addition to change of shift report, there's also something going on uh, which is called uh, rounds, which is when you have the entire healthcare team with all the disciplines involved uh, going from bedside to bedside, having their conversations in front of the patient, which is even more extensive than just having the nurses do it. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've only been involved in that once as uh, uh, when my wife was in the hospital, but it was mostly the doctor asking questions of the staff that was around. It was more, it seemed to be him more teaching and there was not a lot of interaction. Um, you know, they were in the room for, I don't know, three to five minutes maybe and then out. Uh, so 
not a lot of interaction. Could have been a lot done, but I could also see where that could take a long time. So maybe that's why they didn't do it. Uh, it is it is practiced now with the patient being involved in the family, okay. and it uh, does take more time. But as you pointed out, it also saves time because the communication is yeah. clear. Everybody knows what everybody else is thinking and saying and working towards. Yeah, and and to me that's the key. If everybody's um, marching in the same direction, your outcomes are going to be better. Uh, and yeah, you may spend a little bit more time up front, but over time you're going to get a lot more accomplished and your outcomes are going to be better. Um, now uh, let me uh, let me throw a surprise question at you. If a hospital is not doing this, maybe they're following the, the, the protocol that I've seen where they just come in and say, hi, my name is Sally, and they move on. W what should a hospital do uh, if they're thinking about implementing the bedside shift change report? Um, probably uh, talk to the staff, find out what they know about doing this at the bedside, because they're already doing it away from the bedside, mm -hmm. I'm sure, having a conversation. Um, finding out what they need to feel better prepared to do this at the bedside. Mm -hmm. Having a couple of people who might have come from some other facility with experience doing this demonstrate so that it becomes comfortable and then kind of jumping in and I would certainly have a list of potential topics to cover and one of them should be the status of patient education at the time as well as you know the vital signs and the medications and the plan of care and the estimated time of discharge that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's no doubt all the all the medical stuff, the science stuff has got to be dealt with um, but I, I, you know, as as a layperson looking looking at it, and watching some of these videos, I think it's important that um, the nurses try to refrain either from too much jargon or offer explanations periodically, because as I watched some of the videos, they would periodically pan to the family, and you could tell their eyes were a little bit glazed over, you know, when they hear all these numbers and all this jargon. It's like I don't know what they're talking about. And, and sometimes, sometimes in the video, the person would be prompted to ask a question. And I know they're just role playing in most of these situations, but um, th th there needs to be some consideration that if the, the more jargon that you use, the more less inclined the patient is going to be to ask a question because they don't want to come off stupid. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you have to be careful about your language and also be aware of how the patient and family are reacting because they may be frightened by things they hear yes. and not knowing that it's not as frightening yeah. as it sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you have to have a conversation. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I, I think this is a very interesting topic, and I, I would like to see us do a couple more episodes about it. Um, I'm kind of at the beginning stages of my research on it, and as I find... Um, new documentation videos and things of that nature I will post those so that um, viewers can take a look at them see what other hospitals are doing and uh, we'll see if we can um, uh, figure out a way to help hospitals supercharge their uh, change of shift report by making sure they incorporate patient education so we don't have this gap uh, in information uh, that uh, could potentially be there because the you know the goal is to make sure the patient's educated enough so that they get out of the hospital as quick as they can and they are able to take care of themselves and know what to do if something is goes wrong right exactly okay and so. change of change of shift at the bedside is also a great opportunity to have uh, teachable moments oh. where <laughs> yeah duh yeah <laughs> where the patient says wait a minute I don't get that yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Well, uh, a fun topic today. I enjoyed it. Um, so I appreciate your time today. Why don't you tell folks how they can find you? Well, I've got a blog at www.notimetoteach, and I'm on Twitter at no time to teach. Okay. And for those of you interested uh, in Fran's book, it's available wherever books are sold, uh, you know, in uh, regular book form and ebook form. And I know you can certainly get it at Amazon. If you are interested in a group purchase or a bulk purchase, uh, there's a sizable discount available at her uh, publisher. It's Pritchett and & Hull, and their website is p-h.com. And if you're interested in ways to incorporate video and video on demand into patient education, 
you can take a look at our website, SynergyBroadcast.com. Uh, look under Solutions for Patient Education, or you can Google MMDS or Medical Media Delivery System, which is our video on demand system. And uh, um, by all means, uh, be sure and check out Fran's blog. There's lots of interesting stuff there. Uh, so, Fran, thanks very much for your time today, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Bye, Chuck. Bye bye.